Good morning, Regent Life Church family. Hope it's been a good week for you of worship and witness. And it's good for us to be together, whether you're gathered in person or tuning in online. I want to begin with this really familiar and such a powerful and clear articulation of who Jesus is found in Colossians chapter one. Paul writes that, for in Christ all things were created, things in heaven and on earth, visible and invisible, whether thrones or powers or rulers or authorities, all things, all things have been created by Christ through him and for him. He is before all things, and in him all things hold together. And he is the head of the body, the church. He is the beginning and the firstborn from among the dead, so that in everything Christ might have the supremacy. Would you pray with me? Jesus. You are the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. You are the author and perfecter of our faith. And I pray that in these moments together, you would help us keep watch for your presence, to pay attention to the work of the Spirit and the Word today in our midst. We open our hearts to you. We remember who it is that we worship. I wanna just sing this melody invite you to sing it in a moment. If you know it, go ahead and sing with me. Because you are worthy of it all. Yes, you are worthy of it all. For from you are all things, and to you are all things. You deserve the glory. That together, you are worthy of it all. You are worthy of it all. For from you are all things, and to you are all things. You deserve the glory. For from you. of what you've done, Jesus. But there were walls between us. By the cross you came and broke them down. You broke them down. And there were chains around us. And by your grace we are no longer bound. No longer bound. You call me out of the grave. You call me into the light. You call my name and my heart came alive. Your love is stronger, your love awakens, awakens. 
We sing of this newness of life. This is my testimony from death to life. Cause grace rewrote my story. I'll testify by Jesus Christ the righteous. I'm justified. This is my testimony. Sing it together. This is my testimony from death to life. Cause grace rewrote my story. I'll testify by Jesus Christ the righteous. I'm justified. This is my testimony. I'll sing it again. This is my testimony from death to life. Cause grace rewrote my story. I'll testify by Jesus Christ the righteous. I'm justified. This is my testimony. This is my testimony. Singing of your love, Lord. Singing of your love. Your love is greater. Your love is stronger. Your love awakens, awakens, awakens me. Your love is greater. Your love is stronger. Your love awakens, awakens, awakens me. Your love is greater. Your love is stronger. Your love awakens, awakens, awakens me. Your love is greater. Lord, we remember today that it is by grace that we have been saved through faith. And this is not of ourselves. It's not of our own doing, Lord. It is the gift from you, not by works. So none of us can boast in anything today except the cross of Jesus Christ. We invite again this resurrection spirit of you, Jesus deep into our being. Awaken us to your presence and awaken us to service. We sing that all things have passed away and your love has stayed the same. Your constant grace remains the cornerstone. that we thought were dead are breathing in life again you caused your sun to shine on darkest nights for all that you have done we will pour out our love this will be our anthem song Jesus, we love you. Oh, how we love you. You are the one our hearts adore. Sing of hope. The hopeless have found their hope. The orphans now have.
God, thank you for making a way for us to be reconciled to you. Thank you for becoming flesh. We fix our eyes on Jesus right now, the way, the truth, and the life. Thank you, George, for leading us in this time of worship. It's been so meaningful as we are making our way, as we're journeying to the cross. This is the season that we remember what Jesus Christ has done for us, what God has made possible through Jesus Christ, his one and only son, who he has given to us. He has given to us. He sent Jesus to us to show us the way to the Father. I've entitled today's message, How Can We Know the Way? How can we know the way? In today's message, we will answer that question. How can we know the way? How can we know the way to the celestial city that we've talked about during Pilgrim's Progress? If you've not been a part of the Pilgrim's Progress study, I hope that you will sign up for the next one. Uh, Many, many of our people have gone through this um, 20-week study with Pastor Will. It has been monumental. It has been life-changing, and we continue to disciple people. But making our way to the city, traveling on this road, a road that is just filled with all kinds of ups and downs and twists and turns and obstacles, trials, tribulations, testing of our faith— Trouble. We're going to have a lot of trouble in this world. Jesus said it best when he said in John 16, 33, in this world, you're going to have a lot of trouble. But don't lose heart. Don't give up. Don't throw in the towel because I have overcome the world. How can we be sure today, my brothers and sisters, how can we be sure today that we are on the right road and we're living ready? ready for the second coming of Christ. He came once, he's coming again, and he's coming for his bride, he's coming for his church, and we need to make sure that we're on the right road. How can we know the way? In Isaiah 35, 1 through 10, we read these words. The desert and the parched land will be glad. The wilderness will rejoice and blossom. Like the crocus, it will burst into bloom. It will rejoice greatly and shout for joy. The glory of Lebanon will be given to it, the splendor of Carmel and Sharon. They will see the glory of the Lord, the splendor of our God. Strengthen the feeble hands, steady the knees that give way. Say to those with fearful hearts, be strong, do not fear. Your God will come. He will come with vengeance. Verse 8 says, and a highway will be there. It will be called the way of holiness. It will be for those who walk on that way. The unclean will not journey on it. Wicked fools will not go about on it. No lion will be there, nor any ravenous beast. They will not be found there, but only the redeemed. Only the redeemed will walk there, and those the Lord has rescued will return. They will enter Zion with singing. Everlasting joy will crown their heads. Gladness and joy will overtake them, and sorrow and sighing will flee away. I love what it says in verse 8, and a highway will be there. It will be called the way, the way of holiness. Jesus Christ is responsible for our holiness. But in order to stay on the road, the road to the celestial city, we need to hear what God says to us when he says, be holy because I am holy. Without holiness, no one will see the Lord. So if you want to see the Lord, you need to be holy. And like I said, Jesus is responsible for my righteousness, my holiness, everything that he's called me to, everything he's called us to, church, he is responsible for making that happen. Proverbs 14, 12 says, there is a way that appears to be right, but in the end it leads to death. There is a way. There is a way and it appears to be right. Maybe we're going the right way. It looks like we're going the right way, but in the end, it leads to death. That's why we need to be ever so careful to make sure that we are on the right road. Our text today comes from John 14, 1 through 31. 
and the key verse is verse 5. We can know the way because Jesus told us the way. Jesus is the only way, only way to the Father. Contrary to what some may say, that there are multiple roads in a day and age of pluralism, that, you know, there's many different ways to get many different roads that lead to God. That's not what Jesus says. Jesus is the only way to the Father. We read this, there is no other name by which we, by, by which we must be saved. Look what it says in Acts 4.12. It says, salvation is found in no one else. For there's no other name under heaven given to mankind by which we must be saved. No shortcuts, no backdoor entry, good works are not enough. We can't, th- we can't get there on our own merits. Salvation is found only in Christ. Jesus is the only way to the Father. One of the greatest inventions, I think, of all time, at least for me personally, is GPS. We've all traveled on a wrong road. We've all been lost from time to time. We've all taken a wrong turn, a wrong exit. We've done a U-turn, some legally, some illegally. (laughs) But one of the greatest inventions of all time is a GPS. What would we do without the GPS? I would get lost. I would get lost. That's what would happen without the GPS. I would get lost. You would get lost. I can remember being uh, getting ready for a camp that I was going to be speaking at in New Jersey. We were going to Camp Delenco, and we had been there before. It wasn't the first time. But we were traveling. We got on the 90, and instead of heading towards New Jersey, we headed in the opposite direction. And we realized it probably about an hour and a half into the trip that we had gone the wrong way. Now, we didn't have a GPS at that time. God has entrusted us with the Holy Spirit, which lives in us. God's Spirit lives in us. God's Spirit that has been entrusted to us serves as our GPS as we travel along on our faith journey. I once heard it said that GPS, what it stands for in Christian circles, is God's plan of salvation. God's plan of salvation. So if you have the GPS, if you have God's Holy Spirit living in your life, leading you, guiding you, directing directing you, empowering you to be all that God has created you and called you to be, you will stay on the right road. Matthew 7, 13 through 14 says, Enter through the narrow gate, for wide is the gate, broad is the road that leads to destruction, and many enter through it. But small is the gate, narrow the road that leads to life, and only a few find it. We've talked about this in Pilgrim's Progress. We've talked about this in midweek times together. We've talked about this in sermons. The road to God is very narrow, very, very narrow. It's not a broad road. The broad road that leads to destruction is very, very wide, and most people will travel this road. It's this small little road, this narrow little road off the beaten path. That's the only way we're going to find our way to God. And look what it says here in John chapter 14. Jesus is talking to his disciples. He's preparing them for he's going to be going away. He's going to be dying on the cross and then going to the Father. And he's kind of getting them ready for this. He's telling them how it's going to play out. And that's where we are as a church. We're moving towards Easter And so we're preparing our hearts and preparing ourselves for for Friday, the Good Friday, and and the death of Christ. We're we're, We're moving towards that, the greatest sacrifice ever made on our behalf. Jesus says, do not let your hearts be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. Believe, trust, have faith. My Father's house, verse 2 says, Jesus says, my Father's house has many rooms. If that were not so, would I have told you that I am going there to prepare a place for you? 
And if I go and I prepare a place for you, I will come back and take you to be with me so that you also may be where I am. You know the way. You know the way to the place where I'm going. I want you to think of the road that we're talking about. I want you to think of the road in terms of relationship. In terms of relationship. We're traveling this road. And the only way that we can get from point A to point B is through Christ. That's verse 5. Thomas says, Lord, I, I don't know where I'm going. How can I know the way? How can we know the way to where it is that you're going? We don't know where you're going. I would encourage you, faith family, to follow Jesus to keep your eyes on Christ. He knows what he's doing and where he is going. I believe getting on the right road and staying on the right road is only possible through Christ. So if you're taking notes today, point number one is this. There is only one road to the Father. Only one way. And Jesus is the way. The only way. Verse 6, Jesus says, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. You might want to underline that in your Bible, except through me. Christ is telling you the only way to get to the Father is through me. Jesus is saying, I'm your ticket. I'm your way. There is no other way. I didn't say it. Jesus said it. And there are many people who are pushing this idea that there's multiple ways and just be a good person, just be baptized, just throw a couple dollars into the offering plate when it's passed, you know, be, be good to your neighbor. Just uh, We are only saved. You have to hear me say this today. We are only saved by grace through faith in Jesus Christ. We read that in Galatians. We read that in Galatians only way, the only way is through him. And so I encourage you to put your faith and put your trust in him. If you really know me, you will know my father as well, Jesus says. From now on, you do know him and have seen him. You've seen me. And Philip said, Lord, show us the father. Just show us the father and that'll be enough for us. And Jesus answered, don't you know me, Philip? Don't you know me, Philip? Even after I've been among you such a long time? Are there still questions? Are there still doubts? Do you still not to believe? Do you still not believe? Anyone who has seen me has seen the Father. How can you say, show us the Father? Don't you believe that I am in the Father and that the Father is in me? The words I say to you, I do not speak on my own authority. Rather, it is a father living in me who is doing his work. I uh, Believe me, verse 11 says, believe me. Believe me when I say that I am in the father and the father is in me. Or at least believe on the evidence of the works themselves. Very truly, I tell you, whoever believes in me will do the works I've been doing and they will do even greater things. Greater things than these, because I'm going to the Father, and I will do whatever you ask in my name, so that the Father may be glorified in the Son. You may ask me for anything in my name, and I will do it. If you love me, keep my commands. Jesus says, if you love me, if you're going to say that you love me, keep my commands. And I will ask the Father, and he will give you another advocate, another advocate to help you. I underline that in my Bible, to help you. And underline this to be with you forever. Isn't that great? Isn't that a great word? That he is going to send us the Holy Spirit. This is what he's telling them. I'm going to send you an advocate who's going to, I'm going to give this, give, give this spirit to you. I'm going to, it's going to, he, this, this spirit is going to help you. My spirit is going to help you and be with you forever. The spirit of truth. God's Holy Spirit living in us is going to help us. It's going to help us and be with us forever. The Spirit of truth. The world cannot accept him because it neither sees him nor knows him. But you know him for he lives with you and will be in you. That's why we say greater is he. That's a great Bible verse. Greater is he that is in me 
than he that is in the world. Christ in us is the hope, the only hope, the only hope of glory. For Christ is the only way. Therefore, he is the only hope. If you're hoping in another way, if you're hoping in another person, if you're hoping in another relationship, if you're hoping in anything outside of Christ, (laughs) it's just a waste of time. Because there is no hope without Christ. So you're taking notes. The second point I want to make to you, first point, again, there's only one road, one road to the Father. Point number two, you are not alone on the road. Somebody needs to hear that today because sometimes it feels like we're very lonely. We're all alone. We're the only Christian, right? We're the only one who who's trying to live a righteous life in such a wicked world. <laughs> And we, we can kind of have a little pity party for ourselves and, and feel like we are alone. And, and sometimes it does feel like we're all alone. But we're, we're, we're taught and we're told differently here in this passage by Jesus. When Jesus says, you're not alone. You're not alone on the road. I love what it says in Hebrews 13, never will I leave you, never will I forsake you. I want to abandon the work of my hands. You're not alone on the road. He says, I will not leave you as orphans. I will come to you. And before long, the world will not see me anymore, but you will see me because I live. You also will live. On that day, you will realize that I am in my Father and you are in me and I am in you. The presence of God's Spirit in us, accompanying us on this journey to the city, on this road, on this road to the cross, as we're journeying As we're journeying, we have God in us, a hope of glory. Jesus says, I'm going to show you the way. That's the third point. You're not alone. Okay, that was second point. Point number three, Jesus will show you the way. We have a Jesus who has showed us the way to live. He showed us the way to love. And he will show us the way to the city. He has shown us the way the only way. He's given us an example. He's left us an example to follow. He showed us what it looks like to serve others. He showed us what it looks like to sacrifice. He showed us what it looks like to forgive. He showed us what it looks like to offer grace, mercy, compassion. Showed us what it looks like to be righteous. He showed us what it looks like to be persecuted, to be insulted, to be rejected, to be despised. He showed us what it looks like to be obedient and to submit ourselves and to surrender ourselves to the will of God. Jesus will show you the way. Whoever has my commands and keeps them is the one who loves me, verse 21 says, and the one who loves me will be loved by my Father, and I too will love them and show myself to them. Then Judas, not Judas Iscariot, Judas said, but Lord, why do you intend to show yourself to us and not to the world? It's a great question. Why do you intend to show yourself to us and not to the world? I think we have a responsibility, church, and that is for us, for us to show Jesus to our world. And Jesus replied, anyone who loves me will obey my teaching. That's point number four. Obedience will keep you on the right road. Obedience will keep you on the right road. What gets us in trouble and what gets us off the road of righteousness, the highway of holiness, which is the road we need to be traveling on, is disobedience. Obedience keeps us there. Disobedience takes us away from where we need to be. So Jesus says, anyone who loves me is going to obey my teaching. My Father will love them and we will come to them and make our home with them. Anyone who does not love me will not obey my teaching. These words you hear are not my own. They belong to the Father who sent me. All this I have spoken while still with you. And then the fifth point that I'd like to make today is that the Holy Spirit of God will guide you on the road. God's Spirit in us, our GPS. But the Advocate, verse 26, but the Advocate, The Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, will teach you all things and will remind you of everything I have said to you. 
What a great verse. His anointing that rests on us teaches us everything we need to know for life. Everything we need to know to make it to the city. To be welcomed. To hear those words, well done, thou good and faithful servant. His spirit in us, the Holy Spirit. It's going to teach us what we need to be taught. And not only teach us, but remind us, bring to mind the word of God, which we've read, which we've studied, which we've hid in our hearts so that we might not sin against him. He's going to, the spirit of God is going to remind us of what we have heard and what we have read, what we have witnessed. Verse 27 says, peace I leave with you. These are the words of Christ. Peace I leave with you. My peace I give you. I do not give to you as the world gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled and do not be afraid. You heard me say, I'm going away and I am coming back to you. If you loved me, you would be glad that I'm going to the Father for the Father is greater than I. I've told you now before it happens so that when it does happen, you will believe. I will not say much more to you for the prince of the world is coming, which is Satan, and he has no hold over me. (laughs) Amen. He has no hold over Christ, and he has no hold over us, because Christ has won the victory. Greater is he that is in us than the one that is in the world, than the prince that is in the world. Greater is the one who is in us. So this is what Jesus says. But he comes so that the world may learn that I love the Father and do exactly what my Father has commanded me. Come now, let us leave. In closing, church, I want to challenge us. Make sure today that you are on the right road when it comes to faith. We've learned from our study in the book of Acts that God will meet us, even when we're on the wrong road. He met Saul when he was on the wrong road, on the Damascus road, on his way to persecute, to do some more persecuting of the church. God met him. God got a hold of his heart. He was on the wrong road. As we've learned, the road that we have been called to, the narrow road, is a very difficult road, a very hard road, with lots of suffering, disappointment, struggle, But the only way that we can stay on it is with God's help. It is a road that's, as I preached a couple weeks ago, it is a road that's marked by suffering. It's a very difficult road as we journey towards the celestial city. But I know that if, if we can believe what our great God says, what Jesus has told us, we can trust him, we can have faith in him, We can think of the road in terms of this relationship and wanting to stay in relationship with God, wanting to stay in fellowship. And the only thing that gets us out of fellowship, out of relationship, the right relationship is is sin. That's what takes us to a place where we're not supposed to be. And so I encourage us today to put these points into um, practice, to believe, to receive only one road to the Father. And Jesus made no bones about it. He said, I'm the way, I'm the truth, I'm the life. The only way to the Father is through me. The only road is through me. Jesus is going to show you the way. That's point number three, actually. Let me go back to point number two. You're not alone on the road. In review, you're not alone on the road. We have a Jesus who's with us. Emmanuel, God with us. That's why Jesus came to us in the first place, was so that he could walk with us and be with us relate with us, go through everything we've gone through yet without sin so that he is a savior who understands and identifies with his, with his children. Obedience will keep you on the right road. It will obey him, trust and obey for there's no other way to be happy. And Jesus means to trust and obey. And then the fifth point is the Holy spirit of God will guide you on the road. That's your, that's your GPS. Don't try to get to the city. Don't try to don't try to do it by yourself. We can't do it by ourselves. We need each other. And most importantly, we need Jesus. He's the way, the truth, and the life. Only way. In closing, Proverbs 4, 
18 through 27 says that the path of righteousness is like the morning sun, shining ever brighter till the full light of day. But the way of the wicked is like deep darkness. They do not know what makes them stumble. My son, or in this day and age, my daughter, pay attention to what I say. Turn your ear to my words. Do not let them out of your sight. Pay attention to my words. Pay attention to my words. Turn your ear to my words. Do not let them out of your sight. Keep them within your heart. He says, my words are life, for they are life to those who find them, health to one's whole body. Above all else, above all else, guard your heart. For everything you do flows from it. Guard your heart. Keep your mouth free of perversity. Keep corrupt talk far from your lips. Let your eyes look straight ahead. Fix your gaze directly before you. Give careful thought to the paths for your feet and be steadfast in all your ways. And do not turn to the right or the left. Keep your foot from evil. As we respond uh, in closing together, would we, could, could we read this verse together? We're going to pull up on the screen. I want you just to say it out loud where you are. But this is the, this is the, the heartbeat. This is the, the prayer that I pray for us today in closing before we go our separate ways and before we get ready for this week, this upcoming week. If you could pray for me, I'm going to be traveling with my daughter for a couple weeks. And uh, Pastor Will is going to graciously step in. He's driving out to San Diego. Uh, he and He and Patty beautiful people, to uh, present the next two weeks to our faith family. So I hope you'll be a part. I hope you'll join. It's going to be a great word. But let's read this together, Acts 24, 14. However, I admit that I worship the God of our ancestors as a follower of the way, which they call a sect. I believe everything that is in accordance with the law and is written that, and, and that is written in the prophets. It comes down to us admitting, confessing, repenting, receiving, and believing everything that God has said. God's word has the final say, the final authority in our lives. God said it, I believe it. Jesus said it, I believe it. And Jesus would not lie to us. He said, I'm not lying to you. If I'm going there, I wouldn't tell you I'm going to prepare a place for you if I'm not going there to prepare a place for you. And I'm and coming back for you to take you to be with me. So make sure, you're pre- make sure you're prepared. Make sure you're living ready for when that day comes. And we can do this, church. We can do it only through Christ. He says, I'm the way. I'm the truth. I'm the life. The only way. To the Father is through me. Let's pray. Gracious God, we thank you for this day. We thank you for this word. We thank you for this reminder to us just how important it is that we travel this road. And there's only one road that leads to you. Not all roads lead to heaven. Only one road leads to the Father, and that's you, Jesus. So we believe you today. May we believe you today. May we put our faith, trust, and hope in you. And may you help us. You, you've promised that you'll help us and that you'll be with us because of your Holy Spirit, which you've entrusted to us, which lives in us, Christ in us, our only hope of glory. Be with your church this week, we pray. In Jesus' name, amen. Let's fix our thoughts on Jesus, the one through whom all things have been made and the one for whom all things have been made. Jesus, the way, the truth, and the life. Could we exalt that name together? We'll sing. Jesus, the name above every other name. Worthy Lord, Jesus, the only one who could ever say, You're worthy, Lord, worthy of every breath we could ever breathe. We live for you, 
salvation we sing of your love I will build my life upon your love it is a firm foundation I will put my trust in you alone and I will Yes. the way we began today this beautiful passage about the supremacy of Jesus the one who is above all things the name who is above every name the one who is the way and the truth and the life the one who we come to the Father through for in Christ all things were created things in heaven and on earth, visible and invisible, whether thrones or powers or rulers or authorities, all things have been created through Him and for Him. He is before all things and in Him all things hold together. Jesus is the head of the body, the church. He is the beginning and the firstborn from among the dead so that in everything Christ might have the supremacy would you allow Jesus to lead you this week by the power of the Holy Spirit 